doing a metric conversion that is multi-step, usually two steps. For simple conversions in metric system, you can usually get them in two steps. And here's how. So first of all, how do you know that you have a multi-step? Well, if we recall um, from before, whenever we would convert things, we would always say blank, uh, you know, for, in for instance, we would say blank gigameter equals blank megameter. And uh, before we would say, well, the one goes with the prefix, and then the base unit gets the power of 10. That's what we did before. We have a problem here. They're both prefixed. So you'll notice that both of these units, the one we're starting with and the one that we end with, both have prefixes. So we can't use that simple rule that we did before. So we got to kind of do something a little bit different. As it turns out, what we have to do is really not different. It's just multi-step. What we're going to do is we are going to, when moving from one prefixed unit to another, always convert to the base unit first. The base unit, of course, is the one without a prefix. And uh, this, again, applies only to metric conversions. It's kind of like with the type 1, type 2, 3 naming acids like we did before. A lot of times we uh, learn a rule, we learn how to do something, and we realize, well, that doesn't apply to this situation. So first of all, make sure that you're dealing with metric units before you get into the minutia of all this. And so I've sort of stalled a while while you write this down. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to pause it now if you haven't got it all written down. All right, now we're back. So we have uh, this example. We have <coughs> um, to convert to the base unit first. Well, what does that mean? Well, we have gigameters is the thing we're starting with. We're wanting to get rid of it and get it into megameters but we don't necessarily know how to do that. So what we're going to do, like it says, is always convert to the base unit first. That's the one. Convert it to the unit without a prefix. Well, what is gigameter without a prefix? It's meter. So we can get gigameter into meter. We've learned the rules to do that. And then we can, uh, once we've done that, we can take meter and turn it into megameter. We've known, we've learned how to do that as well. And so it's a little bit of a circular process of getting there uh, kind of got to hop onto the base unit in order to get to the new thing that we want to find. So how does that work in this situation? Well, we have 590 gigameters into megameters. So uh, we're going to start like we did before. We're going to start with our number that we start with and our unit that we start with. And we're going to draw our dimensional analysis chart. We want to get rid of gigameters. So uh, it's on the top, so we want to put it on the bottom. And normally we would put megameters up here, but we don't have a conversion factor directly from gigameter to megameter. We're not sure how to do that, but we do know how to get it into just regular meters. And so always chop off one prefix, then put on another. So uh, we know that from our ch chart, from our uh, chart or from our memory, that giga equals 10 to the ninth or a billion. So uh, we need to put either 10 to the ninth, we need to put 10 to the ninth somewhere, and we need to put 1 somewhere. So which goes where? 10 to the ninth goes here, or here, or here, or here. Which is it? I don't remember. Well, the 1 goes 1. Where's 1 go? 1 goes with the prefix. 1 goes with the prefix. That's not a prefix. That is. The 1 goes with the prefix, which means that our 10 to the ninth must go up here. So... If we were to stop, uh, do that math, and we could be done, uh, but we would not be done because we would have the answer in meters. We want megameters. So uh, now we are essentially we've canceled out gigameters, and now we have an answer in meters. So we want to get rid of the meters and replace it with megameters. So uh, since meters is on the top, we're going to put. I shouldn't change colors through midstream put meters on the bottom now because we're trying to get rid of it, get it on top and bottom and it will cancel, uh, which means that we need to put the new unit we want, megameters, on top. And so once again, we have mega equals 10 to the sixth, and so you're always going to put a power of 10 in one spot and the number one on the other. Where does the one go? Oh wait, I didn't write my whole unit here. That's, uh, that is meter here and that is megameter here. So the one goes with the one goes with the 
prefix. One goes with the prefix. One goes with the prefix. Meg is a prefix. And 10 to the 6th goes in the other place with the base unit. There we go. And so now Mega on uh, meters cancels. And then we got the only thing left is Mega meters, which is what we want. Yay, we're done. Uh, except for the math. Now, a word on the math. Um, unfortunately, uh, people struggle with math sometimes, and so this is actually one that uh, uh, someone who's fluent in math can do this one without a calculator, uh, and that's great. Um, it's going to be 5.9 times 10 to the 5th, and you can just kind of look at it and see that. Um, if you want to do it that way, this is really 5.9 times 10 to the second if we put it into scientific notation and whenever things are in powers of 10 then it's easy when you multiply them you add those powers 2 plus 9 and when you divide you subtract the powers so 2 plus 9 is 11 minus 6 is 5 which means the answer is 5.90 times 10 to the fifth and if you followed that god bless you you're a wonderful person, you go far in life, and you can do that. However, if you didn't understand that, let's talk about how do we put this into our calculator again. Um, <clears throat> we're going to hit 590. Ignore this green stuff I just put in there because that was, if you could do it in your head. So you hit 590, and then we hit times, because this next number is on the top, times. And again, like in the last lesson, when you have a power of 10, the easiest thing to do is to hit your E button or actually we hit one and then our E button, EXP or EE, whichever button we have, or uh, times 10 to the N button. We do that, nine, you know, talking about how to punch these into our calculator, we got 590 times one E9, and then the next thing we're gonna do is divide by 10 to the six, so we hit our divide by button, and then our one uh, e, of course, if you have your, uh, you know, parentheses for a lot of these. I don't know if you heard that or not, but that was a nice interruption. I appreciate that. S I covered the mic with my hand. You might there's a big announcement on the, on the uh, intercom in case you're wondering why I just stopped there. So, uh, 590 times 1 e9 divided by parentheses 1 e. Uh, 6. And by E, I mean that E button, the EXP or double E, the scientific notation button on your calculator. And when you hit that, you will get uh, 5.9 times 10 to the fifth, or uh, 590,000. Now let's talk about significant digits. When you have 590,000, or that's our answer that we get, don't drop your unit, do write down that. Uh, we need to see if we wrote that correctly. Well, the rule is uh, that our conversions are not going to change the precision, so we want to keep the number of sig figs we started with. We started with two here. These are two. The zero is not significant, and neither are these zeros, so we kept two significant digits, so we are good. So that is how you would do that one. One more. You can pause the video and try to do this one on your own. Okay, now let's see the solution. 0 0.250 hectoliters. Again, we're going to get out of the base, out of the prefix unit, into the base unit liter, and then into the new prefix kiloliter. So we have two steps. You go hectoliter to liter, and then liter to kiloliter. Uh, so we get rid of hectoliter by putting hectoliter on the bottom, liter on the top. We know hecta means 10 to the 2, which is 100 if you prefer. So we got to put the 10 to the 2 somewhere, and we've got to put the 1 somewhere. Always have a power of 10 somewhere, and a 1 somewhere, and the 1 goes with the... The 1 goes with the... But the 1 goes with the prefix. There you go, hect is the prefix, and the 10 to the 2 goes the other place. Yay! And hectoliter cancels, yay! So now we got it into the base unit liter, and we want to get it uh, from now from the base unit into... And you can just keep extending out your lines to the right for as many conversions as you've got to make. We want to get rid of leader now, so we put leader on the bottom. And we want to introduce the new unit. We want kiloliter. So kilo means 10 to the third, or 1,000. 
and we always need a one, so one goes with the prefix, one goes with the prefix, one goes with the prefix, one goes with the, there it goes, and ten to the third goes there, it's, and so now, the only unit left standing is kiloliter, so we are now done with uh, everything except the math. If you like to do it in your head, the answer is uh, 0 0.0250, or uh, 2.50 times 10 to the negative 2. But if you can't do it in your head, don't want to, you can always type these in. Uh, if you recognize this number as 100 and this number as 1,000, you can just hit times 100 divided by 1,000. However, if you're not good with recognizing powers of 10 as their decimal equivalent, you can always just punch it in the way that we've been trying. And it's usually, if, you don't, if you're not real strong with math, it's probably best just to, uh, just to go ahead and always do it the same way. 250 times 1 E button 2 divide by parentheses 1 E button 3 and that will get you uh, point zero two five zero. Uh, the Actually what your calculator is going to say is point zero two five, but we got to be careful there because we started with three sig figs, the box and dot method, there's a dot so we are going to include, so there's three sig figs. This is not significant, so we need to add one over here. And there we have the same number of significant digits in our answer. Metric to metric conversions. Bye-bye.